So kinetic theory of gases, in my opinion, is a small chapter, but a bit confusing. Okay, just like any other chapter. The size of the chapter is very small. Okay. But then the concepts, uh, you know, definitely you need some time to you know, digest. Definitely, you know, I cannot rush through it very quickly. Um, in a way, I would say the first page is very, very easy because we already talked about you know, Boyle's law, Charles law, Gay-Lussac's law. The second page is where, you know, we have to spend more time. But, you know, today I would like to give you a quick introduction. Okay. So at least 50% will be thorough. Some of the important points I gathered it from your textbook. So look at this basis of kinetic theory. As the name suggests, kinetic means moving. So the gases are not stationary. They are continuously, the molecules are continuously moving. How do I know that? Well, if I open an LPG gas cylinder at one end, I can smell it on the other end within few minutes. Okay. Which means to say that if I want to show it in a I want to represent it in a diagram. So let's say I have a room this big. And let's say I'm standing over here. And I go and somebody else is you know, opening a LPG cylinder on this end. Okay. So if I open it, of course, you're not supposed to do that because it is inflammable, so which is dangerous. But just for the, you know, suppose if you have some safety precautions taken so that, you know, you don't have any spark or anything close by. So in that case, what you can do is suppose if I open this gas, within a few minutes, I'll be able to smell it over here. Why is that? Suppose if the air molecules were stationary like this, as the gas molecule comes out, it will be standing over here. But interestingly, what happens is kinetic theory says that the air molecules are not stationary. Air, air molecules are continuously moving around. So that means it's moving and hitting here, air molecules hitting here. So right now, you know, it may look like the air molecules are not moving. So I don't feel any wind at all. Well, we are not talking about wind here. We are talking about the molecules of the air. Okay. So they are continuously moving in various directions. So because of that, what will happen is the moment I open this LPG gas a little bit over here, right? liquefied petroleum gas. So, you know, inside the cylinder it is liquefied. The moment it comes out because of the atmospheric pressure, here it is very high pressure. So that means it will be in liquid form. The moment I open this, it is coming out to the atmospheric pressure. So in the atmospheric pressure, it will become gas. So that's why it's LPG. So <clears throat> since these molecules are moving here and there, what will happen is this will go and hit this red molecules also, which means this will also experience some force and they will also start mixing up with the yellow lines. So very soon what will happen is the LPG gas molecules will also be spreading out everywhere. Okay, which means to say that that's why you are able to smell it over here. In reality, right, the interesting fact is, you know, of course, it's not required for an exam purpose. The interesting fact is, when you open the LPG, because of the higher mass or higher weight, what will happen is the LPG does not move, it does not rise up, it just stays in the bottom. And this is one of the biggest disadvantages with LPG, because, you know, when there is a fire accident or something, the gas is staying down which means, you know, a small spark or something can, you know, ignite the entire space over here. Very interestingly, if it was a hydrogen gas, okay. So what will happen is the moment it leaks out, it doesn't go down, it goes up. Of course, it's kind of mixing up everywhere, okay, based on the kinetic theory. 
but since this hydrogen gas is lighter, okay, in your chemistry you must be studying that hydrogen is lighter than air, whereas carbon dioxide is you know, heavier than air. So when you are collect, you know, when you are doing some experiments to collect carbon dioxide, you will be keeping the test tube like this. Whereas when you are trying to collect hydrogen, you will keeping, you will be keeping the test tube like this. Is that right? Anyone? Nobody knows. Okay. I was talking to you folks. Let's keep going. No, 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 sir. Hmm? So I don't have any idea. I don't have any idea. Okay. I thought you somewhere in your lower classes you studied carbon dioxide production in lab. Something like that. Okay, doesn't matter. So hydrogen is lighter, which means it will rise up. So when you use hydrogen as a fuel for your engines, right? What will happen is, even if there is some leak or something, it will rise up, which means the danger of you know fire accident is less as compared to LPG. Okay, so this is one of the advantage of hydrogen gas as a fuel. Of course, it's not commercialized yet, but there are a lot of research to use hydrogen as a fuel. Okay, let's see what else I can talk about here. <clears throat> Gas consists of rapidly moving atoms or molecules. Interatomic forces, short range forces, important for solids and liquids, but not for gases. So it cannot, it can be neglected for gases. What do you mean by that? It means in the case of a solid or liquid, if you take solid and liquid, the interatomic forces of attraction or repulsion is significant. So take it down. Interatomic forces of attraction or repulsion is significant significant in solids and liquids but if you take gas gaseous molecules they can be neglected to zero sir yeah so you have one molecule here one molecule here so the interatomic spacing is very high so take it down properly Interatomic spacing is high. So, interatomic forces of attraction is very low. Which means to say that this molecule and this molecule are completely independent. So there is no attraction at all. So that's the reason they say that, you know, this is flying off, flying off somewhere else. This is flying off somewhere else. You may be wondering, sir, don't you think that, you know, they still, you know, when it is coming and hitting the another molecule, they're coming closer. Well, that is true. But because of the high kinetic energy, what will happen is it will hit and then this will start flying in some other direction. That means it's a continuous random motion. Okay, so because of this reason, the potential energy in the case of atoms, it will be negative. So somewhere in your heating curve and cooling curve, I gave you this information. So take it down one more time. It's a bit confusing. So potential energy for gas is zero. Why? Because of this reason. Potential energy for solids and liquids, it is negative. Why? 
Why negative? Because there is some interactive interatomic force of attraction. Okay, so take it down properly. This, as I told you, we already studied this in your heating curve, thermal properties. Let me go back to this one. <clears throat> it was developed by Maxwell, Boltzmann and others. It is very successful theory, gives molecular interpretation of pressure and temperature of a gas, consistent with gas loss, Avogadro's hypothesis, and correctly explains specific heat capacities of many gases. So what they're trying to say here is, it's a successful theory, meaning it explains a lot of other concepts, okay, such as Boyle's law, all the gas loss. Atomic size is around 10 power minus 10, Am I still sharing the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the atomic size, you should know that it is in the order of 10 power minus 10 meters, which is one angstrom. Interatomic distances for solids and liquids, it's around two angstrom. Whereas for gas, it is 10 times, okay, sorry, five times more, okay, which means it is 10 angstrom. Mean free path is the distance a gas molecule can travel without colliding. So 1000 angstroms, it will not be colliding. Okay, after 1000 angstroms, it will be colliding with some other molecule. Of course, as they increase the pressure, more and more molecules come closer, which means this will decrease. But it's just to give you some example or some idea, so you know, what orders we are talking about. Remember, we are not talking about kilometers or centimeters, we are talking about angstroms, which is 10 power minus 10. Interatomic forces are long range, attractive and short range repulsive. Okay. So what that means is when it is kept at a farther distance, it's more like a repulsion. Sorry, it is more like an attraction. When you come closer and closer, they will repel because nucleus and nucleus will repel. So that repulsion will be more. This you must have studied in your chemistry. Okay. John Dalton's concept is atomic theory to explain loss of definite and multiple proportions obeyed by elements when they combine into compounds. Okay. So the first law says that any given compound has a fixed proportion by mass of its constituents. So hydrogen can combine with oxygen as H2 and O or H2O2, something like that. But it cannot combine as H3O2. It cannot combine as H3O1. Okay. Similarly, carbon-1 will combine with two oxygen atoms, CO2. Okay. Or one carbon and one oxygen to form carbon monoxide. But it will not form as you know C4O3, something like that. Okay. It, may not, it may not form a compound like that. So that's the meaning of this. Any given compound has a fixed proportion by mass of its constituents. Did you study this in chemistry somewhere? Yes, no? Not it? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. When two elements form more than one compound for a fixed mass of one element, the masses of the other elements are in the ratio of small integers. Okay, again, something very similar to this. So here it is. So if you take H2 is a, a fixed mass of one element, which is H2, O can be combined as one or here it is two. So it means it is one is two here. Similarly, for carbon dioxide, carbon and oxygen, carbon monoxide is 
this way, one and one. Here it is one and then two, two atoms here. So one is two. To explain these laws, Dalton suggested smallest constituents of elements are atoms. Okay. So the etymology of atom is cannot be cut. Okay. So I don't know if you have studied this somewhere or not. Okay. So in biology, in medical terms, Tommy refers to cut. So a term means cannot be cut. Okay. Whenever they are doing some operation to cut some thing, you know, it will end in the word Tommy. Any anybody remember any Thomas from your medical terms? Biology students. Anatomy. What is that? Anatomy. 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 Okay. Why? You are separating all the separate organs. Is that right? Anatomy. Anything else? I know vasectomy. A uh, lot of Tommy's in your medical terms. Whenever they do some operations, it lends us Tommy. So atom means cannot be cut. So at Dalton's time, this was around 1800s. So he assumed that atom is the smallest, smallest uh, particle of a substance. You cannot make it smaller than that. Okay. Building blocks of uh, substance. Of course, 100 years later, J.J. Thompson discovered electron, then it was proton, and then it was neutron. So slowly, you know, we know there are a lot of subatomic particles. So atom is not the smallest part. But still, you know, the name has been there for a long time. So we don't, we don't change the name. Smallest constituents of elements are atoms. Atoms are identical but differ between different elements. Okay. They combine to form a molecule or compound. Okay, you know all these things already. Gay Lussac's law when gases combine to form another gas, their volumes are in the ratio of small integers. Okay. Basically, it's, it means that you cannot have 1.5. With, you know, 2.5, it will be like, you know, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, something like that. When gases combine to form another gas, for example, hydrogen and oxygen, right? So hydrogen is one gas, oxygen is another gas. So here you have either 2 is to 1 here or 1 is to 1 here, right? You know, following... Since these things are easy stuff, I'm just reading through it. Okay, I'm not giving much of an explanation. Avogadro's law, you know that you know all gases have the same volume, temperature, and pressure. So you must be studying something called standard temperature and pressure, meaning standard temperature is around 25 degrees Celsius, 293 Kelvin. Pressure is atmospheric pressure, right? 1.013 into 10 power 5 Pascal. Okay, so if you if I take different gases of the same volume, right, we'll have the same number of molecules. So this is a very interesting concept. So I take a cup of oxygen and I take a cup of hydrogen. So according to this, okay, if it is in the same temperature and pressure, then both of them will have the same number of molecules. Same as saying same number of moles. Okay, some books will say same number of moles. Some books will say same number of molecules. So this is what is your Avogadro's log hypothesis. Okay. Okay. I didn't realize that the time is up. Oh, it's five minutes past the last time. Okay, so I think in the previous chapter somewhere I already discussed Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Gay-Lussac's law. So go through this before coming to the next class. Okay, go through your ideal gas equation. All these things you must have, you must be studying in your chemistry also. So go through it. Okay. So you should know what is 
mass number of atoms okay. molecular mass why what is this u and what is this you know molar mass so try to understand this table okay so go through it and come i'll explain you more yes thank you sir bye thank you sir okay thank you all bye thank, thank you sir. sir thank you sir